to my else words, this is a the typically the main discussion point, but since I've been doing all this by myself, um, I'm going to do some comic book picks. This is something that I do for Galactic Radio, but I figured I would share this here and share more than just the plot synopsis than with this. Um, and I'm going to start with DC. DC comic books, like I told Beat in the before we before we came on here, it's very light reading. It's five. It's four comic books from DC this week. They're still selling, you know, there's still quite a bit coming out this week, but a lot of them are trade paperbacks. You know, it's a collected volume. It's a volume of a comic book and stuff like that. But we got this week, uh, Wonder Woman Annual Number 1 is one I'm going to talk about. Um, this is this has got a pretty big price tag of $4.99, and it's written by Greg Rucka. Mentioned him earlier. And this is something cool. In the days after year one, Diana uh, comes face-to-face with Superman and Batman for the first time as illustrated by year one artist Nicholas Scott. And years later, Liam Sharp brings you the story of how their friendship has evolved. So this is, um, for those of you guys who do not know about the Wonder Woman book, how Greg Rucka had wrote it, he wrote the books, um, because this is one that was doing the twice monthly, you know, every other week uh, thing. He had uh, Liam Sharp and Nicholas Scott alternating. So the odd number books were set in the present day. Um, for the first volume and then um, with the story called the lies and then the even number books were called the truth and the even number books i believe were, were drawn by nicola scott and they were her her origin story but told in a different way told in a way that weren't that wasn't you know the, the typical because it because it, it was it was a great compliment to each other because the lies was tearing down you know, was she made of clay? Was she the love child of Zeus and Hippolyta? Um, you know, is she a demigod? Is she, you know, just really, really strong? What, like, all these things that, you know, were a result of the whole, this whole rebirth thing, which is rewriting and fixing um, a lot of the, the New 52 stuff. I'm not going to lie. I do like quite a bit of it, but that's also because I came in in the New 52. That's where I really started reading comic books was their Wonder Woman annual looks like it's going to be like an anthology thing like it's going to be a couple it's going to be a few different short stories um in this book so i do recommend you check this out um over at image comics i'm going to go right to the other one because it's a quarter i told this to be and it is going to be available for 25 cents for um in celebration of image comics uh 20 or 25th uh, 25 year anniversary and this is saga number 43. This is written by Fiona, or sorry, written by Brian K. Vaughn with art by Fiona Staples. This is the beginning of a new story arc. And th- this is saga returning monthly or returns monthly with a brave new direction and um and to celebrate images 25th anniversary. This full-sized issue costs just 25 cents. I still cannot believe that. This is the second time that they've done at least this year, this because they did The Walking Dead earlier, earlier this year. Um, there could be other ones, but with image, I'm a little, I'm a little bit picky when it comes to books, mainly because a lot of them, the continuing books, they are, you have to read a lot. Like I, I did read through walking dead, but I don't think I could do that with invincible or spawn. And I try, I did, I did try spawn. I tried, um, with, I believe it was issue 250. Um, that they had like last year and it was one of those i'm like uh, eh. i mean i see why people like it but it's not my cup of tea um but anyways saga saga number 43 25 cents both print and digital i you can definitely believe your bet your ass i'm buying this um hazel and her star-crossed parents embark on a thrilling new adventure at the westernmost edge of the universe i've loved this story that they're telling because like you know the you could you could say the first bits of this are loosely based on Romeo and Juliet you, you know the Capulets and the Montagues the Moonies and the oh I forgot what the other ones are called but you have you know these two different for, uh, the horns and the wings essentially um the jets and the sharks and you have these two um Marco and Elena where you cut they you come in to them fucking essentially this is the first issue and to where they are having a kid there, or they're, well, they're later having Hazel, who is a cross between the two of them. She has horns and she also has wings and all that. And they are on the run from both sides. This has been such a co- compelling story. 
it's it's been out for a while. Gosh, I don't know how long how old it is, but and it's because of the fact that Fiona Staples, such a great right, uh, such a great artist. Um, her artwork is that it is art. So they take breaks, and it's like it's either three or it's six issues. I want to say, and then she'll take a break, and then you know it'll be off for a couple, or it could be three. It's either three or six. I'm blanking on which one it is. Should they'll do those issues, and then they'll take a break so she can get up, so she can get. You know, copy where they have a pad of three and then they'll release the three or, you know, release the six or whatever. So it's not to where it's not, you know, we're not getting long extended breaks. It's that they're on a set schedule and all that. And it's because her artwork is so goddamn gorgeous. I'm probably right up there with a lot of people who are like, yeah, you're always talking about, you know, we all know Saga. It's been so great. But, you know, I don't care. You know, people want or need to hear this because it's, it's, a great jumping on point if we're starting a new thing and also there's only been four five trades uh four or five trades and then like i think it's like two omnibuses um so it's well worth it in all honesty um the next comic book is pack list number one this is an anthology book i picked the sheerly for the fact that like it was a number one i will check out most number ones from image comics pack list number one is an anthology book um it's each issue is telling like is going to tell like three different stories and Dustin Weaver is doing the art, the um, story. He's writing it. He's doing the art. and He's doing the cover for it. So that's probably where it is. is he's doing. Yeah, he did variant covers for Shutter Number One. Um, but I've I've heard of him before. Um, I just can't think of where off the top of my head. This is one I'm going to check out just because of the fact that it looks it does look interesting, and it, it looks like they're telling. He's going to be telling such different stories and on a week to week basis. Or not a week, a uh, month to month basis with the different issues. And then my last, it, the last one from Image, it's honestly a no, a no doy, is Sex Criminals. I Like I told B, and he's he admitted he was a little bit behind. Uh, this is actually on my pull list. Like I have a pull list with my comic book shop, and this one is on there. But I saw the, I saw the cover, and I'm like, I just re- saw another part that I like too. Um, but the the book is the uh, the issue this week or month is called Down with the Thickness, and that is thick. I do not have a lisp because I'm like in my head. I immediately went to the song like get up. Get, like I immediately started playing the song in my head. I'm like, God damn it! It looks so cool. They've told they've been telling a great story. Beat brought it up earlier when we we're in pre show of if they could only be consistent, and that's the fucking truth. Like I, I said it then, and I'll say it now. Uh, Matt Fraction, and it's because Matt Fraction and Kelly Sudeconic are so busy doing 5,000 things, bringing up the, you know, like doing this whole milk fed, uh, milk fed criminal mastermind production company where they're bringing, you know, great comic books to the big, to both big and small screens. Like, uh, um, I know they're working on Wicked in a Vine. Uh, I think, uh, I'm hoping Sex Criminals was in that. Pretty deadly. You know, all these different properties from them and fellow creators to the screens um and then chip Zdarsky is in high demand himself i mean he was doing jughead over at archie comics he's doing the new spider-man book peter parker the spectacular spider-man i had a cheeks it's on my uh one of the free comic book day comics uh you then go to you know he's doing one of the guardians books i forget which one but and they're all busy so it's like you know where i'd love to see consistent it's like i'd rather see i'd honestly like to see quality so it's like if we oh if we're you know so off you know off on things and plus honestly I just want another just the tips book I want that too because I mean it's, it's like I tell people at work the letters page or the letter daddies as they call it as they call it on in here is probably my favorite part of the book because I mean when you have <laughs> when you have such funny things like you know pre cum can be used as a bike chain lubricant or you want to spice things up, really spice things up in the bedroom, tie your partner up to the bed, get out of the house and move to a different state. You know, shit like that is so fucking hilarious to me. Um, those are usually, sometimes those are the first things I'll read in the book. I'll just be like, you know, fuck it. Letters page. <laughs> and, you know, stuff like that. So I, I again, I, I recommend these. I got two more and then I'm going to wrap things up here. Marvel Moon Knight number 14. I've been a big fan of this Moon Knight run by Jeff Lemire. And um, actually since... Uh, Garth Ennis uh, brought him back to the fold over at Marvel. But this one was uh, really, really interesting uh, 
concept. This was, you know, Mark Spector in an, in an insane asylum. Um, basically making you question this whole character. Like, is he really the superhero or is he just a nut job who thinks he's a superhero and really bending your mind to this? But it looks like they're coming to the end of their story. Now, whether they keep going on and doing something else or they bring in a new team, I would honestly like to see this team because um, I think Greg Smallwood's worked on this a little bit longer than Jeff Lemire, but I like this art style. I like the stories that that Jeff Lemire is telling. Um, I've been I've been a big I've been a fan of Jeff Lemire since he did the new Fifty Two run of Green Arrow with um, Andrea Sor- uh, Sorrentino, um, who I've been following her now with over at Marvel and loving the work. Um, yeah, this looks like it's going to be the big um, cl- uh, climactic fight between Mark Spector and uh, Konshu. I never know if I'm pronouncing his name right. I think it's Konshu, um, the Egyptian god that he gets his powers from. Um, but that is Moon Knight number 14. And then the last one is a new new comic book. It's the whole resurrection line thing. And that is Cable number one. Written This is written by James Robinson with art by Carlos uh, Pacheco. And I just love this first line. Walk softly and carry a big gun. That's that's basically Cable. This is we're gonna be following Cable. They're getting a lot more of the X Men are getting a lot of their more of their own single books, like uh, the Jean Grey book, which I I did enjoy. Um, Iceman's getting his book own book. Uh, there's a few other people that I cannot think of right now that are getting their own books. Um, Old Man Logan's getting taken over by Ed Brisson and Mike uh, Diodato Jr. Because I got the thing right here from my comic book shop. Um, I swear I had a cheat sheet up here at one point, but whatever. Honestly, I I've been enjoying these books. And so, you know, and I like this, this whole story that they did with Cable with the Uncanny Avengers, um, with the Unity Squad, as it were. So, yeah. I'm-